The moment is here, you can stop your search. It's Comics by Perch. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, let's get to this mail. It says, hey Perch, I uh, love your channel and all you stand for. All I stand for. All right. Um, I enjoy hearing your opinions and your realistic insights into the comic industry. Well, I appreciate your stance on hating Arby's. So that uh, I too agree. Arby's is terrible. Um, anyway, I'm a young comic creator hoping to make it into the world of comics as both a writer and an artist. One of my first jobs out of college was working for a pop culture news site writing articles. However, during my time there, I became disillusioned with the industry due to the company's focus on culminating hit pieces rather than insightful news or anything interesting. The pay was also lousy, uh, working uh, various writers to the bone for peanuts. A few months ago, myself and a few other writers were let go from the company, leaving me um, battered yet thankful it was over. How do you recommend new... <laughs> okay, so by the way, common common story there. And, and I, I mean, at this point, I think everybody needs to realize if you're working for a pop culture website or somebody doing, you know, quote, news articles or whatever it happens to be, that you are, uh, you know, it's an effectively, because the ad market has softened, you're in a kind of, clickbait to volume kind of world now it's not uh it, you know the the days of an investigative reporter putting in time and effort and really trying to get to the truth and do some hardcore analysis it's just not profitable it's it's not and, and frankly it's it's a lot of things it's why you know this channel would actually make double the money if i came on every video and i i either said uh, hey the maga tards are screwing things up or if I came on and I said, uh, you know, woke assholes are ruining the industry. That's how you make money doing this. And I don't begrudge that. And I, I don't begrudge the people who, you know, are, are taking that approach. They're trying to make money. Good for them. They're chasing it. Every now and then I say things like this and, and people are like, oh, he's taking a shot at this YouTuber, that YouTuber. No, I, I'm taking a shot at the, at the world that's created this. But for the people who are getting paid, I mean, you know, don't hate the player, hate the game, right? I just like it, it make go make your money. It is what it is. I, I mean, there's, you know, for all the people, they're the kind of bitter people on Twitter or Facebook that go after like all those nasty YouTubers. Those YouTubers are working to get paid. just like you're working to get paid. Everybody's just trying to make some money. Here. So let's let's stop. Let's stop. Uh, you know, to, don't deal with the symptom, deal with the source. But uh, but anyway. Um, that, that's what it is. And I, I'm not surprised that, uh, it was, you know, you were disillusioned working for it. it. If you went in expecting kind of one thing and you got, you know, Hey, just, we need to churn out content that, you know, you said, uh, hit pieces, but I mean, the reason why they're hit pieces is not because anybody actually cares about solving the problem. It's a hit piece because those are spicy and they get engagement. I, I mean, the, the funny thing, so I'll, I'll throw this out there too. A lot of the cancellation that happens to people when you see kind of big companies pile on, it's not because those people are like truly, truly have an ideological difference in what's being said. It's that those people are trying to profit off of it. When you see uh, tweets go out there from, you know, fairly low, you know, no-name comic writers, and it's a hit piece or it's a hit uh, tweet on somebody, it's not because they're there going, I intrinsically, in my core, disagree with this person's philosophy, and the world needs to know. That's not what they're doing. That's not, that's not really what's in their heart, because the reality is many of these people are hypocrites doing the exact same thing. I mean, have you ever tracked for the moment how many people bitch about gatekeeping in comics while absolutely you know, doing gatekeeping in comics? It's, it's ridiculous. It, this stuff's all very hypocritical. I, there's very little truth in these ideologies. It's about it's about popularity. It's about dopamine hits for likes. It's about getting somewhere. A lot of the people fighting, you know, the, on, on one end of the culture war or another are fighting it out of self-interest. And, and I, again, feel, feel free to kind of, you know, wrap your head around that a little bit, but just think for a moment. Um, when you see a, a new site or you see somebody doing a, I'm going to cancel this guy for being a, whatever, a Nazi, you know, they know, damn well the person's not actually a nazi and they know also know damn well that the, the person is not I mean, especially if it's like somebody in comics like they, they, they there's not a ch it's like okay so for example let's say you don't like eric july and you want to go after eric july okay 
your, your concerns of him being an alt-right or hate or whatever the hell you label you want to put on it, they're, they're a bit silly because that's not actually what people think. That's not actually what, you know, there's, there's no threat that exists there. And nor is there like, there's not a world where it's like, oh my God, if we don't, if we leave Eric July alone, then, you know, before we know it, he's going to be president of Marvel. It, that's never going to happen. Nor as much as his uh, comics, with, you know, with, whatever they sell or, or not sell, they're not going to play. He's not suddenly going to like take over all the comics. You're not going to walk into a Safeway or a Kroger at some point and see, you know, Air July comics everywhere because nobody said anything. And so he took over the industry. There's, there's no threat there. So just deal, just stop chending that there's an imminent danger there because it, it's phony. The reason why these news sites and the, they put stuff up like this is because they're hoping that people come along, go, I identify with that politics. And then they start clapping like dumb seals and they get ad clicks for it or they get hits for it or they get a bunch of people like, gosh, you're right. Thanks for taking it to the bad people. You're one of us. It's, it's all that game. If there were truly, truly threats here, they'd be handled way differently. But they're not. This is all a bunch of this phony. Uh, so anyway, I, I went too far on that. So let's let's keep let's keep going with this mail. If you still remember what uh, you're asking, it says, "How do you recommend young people or people who desire to foster a new age of comics to learn and understand from previous generation mistakes?" Thank you. We'll definitely miss the show. Um, and then there's a link to a site that you previously worked for. You'll know exactly where I worked. I won't read the site, but I think we can all guess. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't see the link until just now when I went down there. I'm like, oh, he's talking about blank, and uh, sure enough, you know. But ah, uh, 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 well. That anyway. That's just that's kind of funny. Um, yeah. So, uh, what's my advice? I, my first bit of my my most probably critical bit of advice for a younger generation trying to figure out kind of what to do and how to make it all work and everything else is this. Um, make something. That simple. You need to start, you need to put something out there. Put some skin in the game, put some ink on the paper, make something. And if that sounds overly simplistic, um, I apologize, but it's it's actually, it's it's not that simple. It you You have to actually put something out. Get a comic done. Even if that comic sells 10 copies, even if you wind up giving it away for free on Webtoon or wherever you do, like whatever you do, start the clock. And I've given this advice before. The best way to learn from previous generation mistakes or just make a difference in this industry or whatever you're trying to do is you have to make something. Even if the thing you make sucks, even if it's low quality, even if people laugh at it, even if it's just not, not, you know, not great, whatever it happens to be, you can have many, many great ideas in your head. But if you don't actually put some of those ideas on paper, if you don't actually start to, you know, get them out into the world, I don't know that they matter. You know, you can have uh, lots of people have died with amazing world changing ideas in their minds that never saw the light of day because they never took that step to, you know, put them out. And so that's that's what you got to do. And it's it's it sounds like really simple advice. It sounds like obvious advice. You might listen to this right now and go, yeah, yeah, of course, I already knew that. My counter question to you is, so have you done it? Have you put a comic out? Have you drawn something like literally if you take a piece of paper and a pen where you're at, like you, you're, you're eating at a restaurant, you're uh, there in Starbucks, whatever, buy, like take it, make yourself a four page comic with stick figures and dialogue. And just see how it flows. Start putting that sequential art on the page and see if you have a story on your hands. See if you can do something in an hour. Again, just, just with rough sketches of where you want it to go. It's, um, it's important that you do that. It's important that you start that clock. Because if you do, you'll learn a lot about yourself. You'll also start to ask the right questions. You know, if you want to you know, change some of the, uh, you make better decisions than what generations in the past made cool um agreed but but it, it's a it's a much different world if you're attacking that problem from a position of really searching for the right answer versus you know you don't really know what you don't you're, you're just asking random questions but you've never actually produced anything it's important that you start and that that is the antidote to almost everything by the way you got to start are you frustrated by the way the industry is going great a lot of people are do something start Start that clock, 
start putting some ideas down, try to do a comic, and don't be afraid of failure. Because, you know, every single famous person you know in comics started with a tiny unknown stinker. All of them did. McFarlane did. Liefeld did. I mean, you could look at the kind of legendary artists that are kings and gods of the industry today. Um, you know, you, you, have you seen the Infinity Inc. work that uh, Todd did? It's it's very basic compared to where he went. If he'd never started, he never would have got where he is. And that's true, again, with, with everyone. You just have to begin. And if you can begin, if you can start this process, you're already in the top 10% of people who are thinking about this business, trying to contemplate what to do, you know, kind of fooling around with it. You're already off to a huge start. Because again, most people never start. Most people just, you know, again, have lots of great ideas. None of them ever go anywhere. So take something. That's the best thing you could do. And then the other thing that is kind of goes right hand in hand with that is, I don't know, maybe the best way to say this is you got to get over yourself. And what I mean by that is you think you have the right answers and maybe you have a lot of the right answers, but you, you definitely don't have all of them. And if you want to, you know, really not make the same mistakes that the older generations have made, in particular around comics, the thing that you're going to need to do is not assume you already have the answers and not assume that you're naturally on the right track because you're young or you're talented or you get one gig or, or anything else. It, it always blows me away how many people in comics uh, get one job. They get, you know, their first job at Marvel. And then suddenly, magically, they are experts at comics. They are a pro. They've they've solved it all. It it's it's amazing to me um, the kind of the the hubris of a lot of people of just um, hey I got my first gig and now I'm perfect and now I will never change. And by the way, if you go into Marvel and DC and you get that first gig, they will uh, aggressively um, support that notion. They will like you know they will tell you like there's a way the comic industry works and it will never change. Nope. Clearly, that's wrong. Lots of dead bodies uh, in the wake of, of that. So be open to the fact that some things will evolve and change over time because they absolutely will. It's, it's stupid to even say that out loud. So obvious. That, you know, just, just be open that you might be wrong. Or even if you're right today, the world may change. So it, that doesn't mean you have to walk around negative. Doesn't mean you, you walk around just, just uh, you know, I... I can never plant a flag in the ground. I can never be decisive about anything because, of course, you should be. Of course, you should, you know, have confidence in what you do, and of course, you should, you know, work for that. But reality is, you know, the the people who succeed in this business and and many businesses are people who can pivot. That's why uh, they one of the big skills that Google and some of the big companies uh, push is, you know, dealing with ambiguity, dealing with flexibility. What they're really saying there is, hey, the world changes, and uh, we need you not to, you know not to be stuck and just determine your way is the only way. Because if you do that, then, you know, definitely you're not going to get anywhere. So that's, that's, that's my advice for you. Make something that's going to unveil a lot and take it from there. So anyway, there you go. That's my advice. And uh, thanks for listening. <laughs>